Hello all, uh, welcome to the 16th lesson of uh, free learning series, SAP ABAP free learning series. So here we have something called, we are discussing something called modularization techniques. So I will create something called G, a program called G model, modularize, and I will try to create this one. Let's see, test. I will give anything, I will give executor program, I will save and the issue we were facing was that uh, subroutine that we were creating, it was not getting created at all so we were discussing about these things as you can see here uh, we have something called uh, pathway value, pathway reference and these were the sub modularization techniques, subroutine, function modules, FM methods, includes, macros and apart from that we will be discussed about what is path by reference using and changing parameters and how to now define these things in our program that also we will see in path by value, path by value and result what is the difference between all these three path by value, path by reference and path by value and result ok so first in this one actually your memory pointed to the original memory gets uh, passed so that when your value is changed inside the subroutine, it reflects in the outside of the parts variable as well. Okay, by value, only a copy of the, actually a new memory gets allocated and a copy of that variable gets passed into the subroutine and the process happens and it does not impact the clone variable. Okay, and then we have something called value and result where the, where we pass uh, the, what we call where we pass a uh, value first as a value and then it's, it's a kind of combination of both you can say where what happens that first when we pass the value um, it uh, its content was copy of memory gets uh, allocated okay new variable gets allocated but once successful execution of the subroutine it comes out it updates the actual variable also but the condition is and form should get executed okay and form should get executed that means it should complete properly there should not be any exception in between okay then only it will work okay so let's see we will see these things in program the day we, the issue we were facing that in the server when we were creating the subroutine we were not getting it so I, what i will do i will give p a i will define some parameters for selection screen parameters p underscore a type int o and then I will define another another one p underscore b type int4 ok and then I will go for let's say p uh, variable data let's say I will name it c type int4 ok and now what I will do I will print p underscore a plus p underscore b and that is equal to c equal to p underscore a plus p underscore b now I will write the sum of the sum of some space here then comma p underscore a and then I will give comma again then I will give space a and this space remember guys these hard code text we can declare in the text symbol also in the text elements you remember so there you can declare those and instead of this hard coded value you can just give the text iPhone 001002 whatever you have declared in the text symbol okay similarly for this whatever hard coded value we are passing we should avoid these things in the program that is not good programming practice ok so the sum is p and p a and p b then we will give is let's say give space so that it will pick up is c and that's all so pretty printer syntax check no error execute 
it's activated and now I'll decode. You give 5, you give 10, and the sum of 5 plus 10 is 5 and 10 is 15. It is coming here, okay? So now here, first let's go and in the text element, let's maintain some select syntax for P, A, and P, B. I say num 1 and num 2. I'm not referring to any data elements, so I can checking this won't help. Data dictionary reference, it will not pick any description from there. Okay, so this is done. Now we will go for creation of subroutine and we will use these variables. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, overwrite the value of p underscore a. Now you you know parameter whatever you declare here, which is user entered input behaves as a variable inside the program okay it's just like a variable global variable inside the program okay and we will check about we will see the difference about global and uh, local variables okay i will mention it because it's very important when it comes to the concept of subroutines the visibility of the variables okay global and local variables variables table internet table, whatever you declare data declare you can say global and local data declarations okay what is global what is local data declaration in terms of within a program okay and then external is something data which comes from data dictionary so let it be and then p a equal to let's say i will say 10 then i will say p b equal to 20 okay so now what i need to do i need to add it up again so you want me to do this again right we have to do it again P underscore A, we have to write the same logic again, entirely same. Let's see. We'll keep it copy and paste and pretty printer. So execute it. Give 15, give 20 years. So first should print 35, but second should will print 30. You see, it's printing 30. Why? Let's put a slash here. Let's put a slash here so that it will print a new line. New line out printer. So, give 5, give 6, or 10, 5, okay, so 5 is, sum is 5, 5 is 10, and then sum of 10, 20 is 30. So, every time I have to add two numbers, any two number in the program anywhere, I have to write this code again and again, this piece of code. So, this is a reusable piece of code, so I can put it into subroutine instead of doing this. Doesn't matter if it's the overwriting the value of PA and PB. I want to add some another variable which has been declared for in the program for some other purpose. Or inside the loop, I want to add some variable. So why to rewrite this addition logic again and again? Why not we can write it at one place and just call it when we need it? So we do it something called perform add number. So this can be anything, this name I am giving subroutine name, it can be anything, X, Y, Z, uh, X, Spiderman, Superman, Batman, whatever you want, you can give it here, okay. So what we are going to do, so we discussed we have, it has something called using parameters, okay. So using P underscore A, P underscore, what are the variables you are going to use inside this to achieve your result. So these are actual parameters, okay, these are the actual parameters that we are going to pass here in the parameters, okay. These are the actual values that we are going to pass here. Okay, which values we are passing. And there is no comma needed. Just space is needed to separate them. So better you write it in the next line so that it becomes more visible. How many videos? So uh, use this practice. Follow this practice using first parameter, second parameter. And then you write after using comes changing. It's all These things are all optional. Okay. Because these are global values. I will explain what is global variable. Okay. Whatever we declare, let's understand the concept of global. Now, we have to define this subroutine. That day, we were double-clicking on it and we were trying to create that subroutine definition. So, I've just given that, okay, let's call this subroutine. And uh, this will not do work. Uh, this will not work until unless you define what you are trying to do inside the subroutine. What is the purpose of the subroutine? You have given a name. You have given just a declaration. You have not def used it yet. You have not defined it yet. Okay. Just like I have declared a parameter here. But its real use is happening here. The logic is processed, it is happening on the screen. We are entering value in it. Similarly, we have to define the logic for it inside what this add number doing. So just create yes. And. Oh, come on, again it's talking. Mm. 
that day also we had this issue. Okay. I'm not sure what is going on. Let's say let's go into the display. And what I will do, I will copy this. Let's see any progress. It should show you a pop-up. Let uh, I will show you on the Google. Uh, how do they do it actually? So let's see. So routine creation in a map. Images. Let's see if we have any images. Huh. So when you just now I double click and I said yes, I want to create. As soon as you say create, it will show you this kind of option. You see, two options will appear. One will be not only two. There can be multiple depending on how many includes you are using. Include program that we will discuss is a part of modularization techniques only. So just try to understand what will happen. This pop up will come exactly same. This pop up will come. I wanted to show you this pop up actually, which is not appearing in my system that server I am using. There is some issue there. Okay, so it will ask you, do you want to create the subroutine definition in the same program? It will be your prayer, you see, jet subtest, that is your program name that will appear. They are creating inside this program subtest, subtest okay. So, we, we will get our G modularization here, name, and its description, the main program it will say. And inside that, if we have any include called, so that we will discuss later. So, those include will be listed here. And by default, here it will show you one include name to create a new include for modularization purpose. So what happens that whenever you try to create any subroutine, it will show you, it will propose you, system is very smart, okay, it will propose you with the existing program name, program name plus the includes used in the program, the includes used in the program. We will discuss this part, don't worry. Include in the program plus a new uh, include, it will ask you to create, okay? And that will have f under f01 as its suffix, underscore f01. That will be its suffix. So these options will be available. So you have to pick one. So usually we pick here just right now this. Otherwise, most of the time we create our own include. So let's do that as well, okay? So we will do that as well. So it's not happening, it's not taking us anywhere. So just copy these things and slash and x. Okay, I have x slash and x is for exiting it. Okay, then I will do user as 38 will go. So guys, this is a different system, but this is also having same issue. Okay, and we will try to change it. So what I will do instead of going by that, what I will do, I will just click on this button you see here, display object list. It will show you hierarchy on the left side. It will, it will feel, look and feel will become like SEAT transaction if you remember. Developer workbench, okay, repository browser and here you select, we are in the program and then this is the program and here. It will show you what are all the fields available in this program, what we have declared it will get added here automatically this hierarchy. So now here what you can do, you can create, let's go to SE38, another session I will open, I will create some, uh, what do you call, one more. I am showing you the good practice, okay, you can directly, the, with the same program name, we create something called uh, underscore sub. Okay, we always create like this. It's not mandatory. You can give any name Z starting with Z. But if, if you are going using to going to use that subroutine that include in the program, which program we give the program name underscore sub we put. That's easy to identify that which program it has been used in. Okay. Just click on create and just give include include for subroutines. So we will create subroutines without uh, this include and with includes. And here you choose include program. You see here don't you don't choose executable. Include programs are non-executable programs. Okay, they are not uh, supposed to get executed. They are just 
uh, you show modularization of the code just to make sure that your all uh, related things are at one place so we do few things like this one one of the things that i'm doing i'm do defining subroutine for include i'm saving as local object okay and then let's activate it okay and then what i'm doing here underscore so there is one more i will define called top okay i will create what is this top for so this is for include for global data declaration global data declaration this all we will discuss now itself okay subroutine so global data local data and enter sorry you have to choose this type include program okay at least it will be local object so just activate it now i have these things okay just close it no problem just close. now we are in the program so you see this here in the beginning before anything and one more thing we can declare here you can let include and give that include name that you have created then control d one was top so top always you give a top okay what will happen whatever data we will declare in this include all data will be like these variables that we are declaring here okay data so we can declare in, instead of declaring it here we can declare it in the top include and we can it will be available and we have called this include here so it is available here for use okay that is the purpose of include different types of include whatever you do in the include that becomes available here for your use add number does not exist you see this error is coming add number does not exist so now when you double click on this to create it will show you in the pop up for suggestion that do you want to create in this one subroutine definition do you want to create in this include do you want to create in this include three options will come as we as we saw in the pop up so right now it's showing here two for their program and for us and one four option will come one will be z modularize okay another will be Z modularize underscore sub Z another will be Z modularize underscore top and fourth will be underscore F one program name underscore F one will be there. Four suggestions will appear. You have to pick one. So I will pick uh, by default. I will pick this sub. Okay, add number. I will declare in sub. I will define this in sub. You see this error is coming currently. Where it says that add number is not defined. This subroutine does not exist. So what I will do? I will just and when you uh, like create using the double click it will automatically create that uh, okay called all the syntax and all but here we have to do it manually now so we had done that day form and form like that so similarly let's see let's take this and always make sure the parameters are matching whatever the parameters you have passed there okay uh, they call something a reference parameter something they call it okay i don't remember right now okay so whatever we are passing here these are the actual parameters okay and whatever the in the definition these are uh, the copy of those parameters we just created this is called um, I, f I forgot what is the, what are these parameters here is called there is a term for that okay they might ask you in interview what are those parameters actual parameter and uh, something is called i'm not sure well, it's not that important that you should know that it should also have same number of using and changing parameter or tables parameter whatever you are passing here as in the subroutine call so this is subroutine definition and what we are doing in the program here we are calling that subroutine so this is called subroutine call and this is called subroutine definition okay so uh, call is happen uh, call is uh, you like uh, performed using a statement to perform p r f o r m and definition starts with form and end form okay so here we have all those three i have uh, and by default when you create it suggest you the names double click and say you try to create it will suggest you this in this way only uh, like p underscore a p underscore b like that whatever name you have passed there that it will get appended we have passed already p underscore so one p underscore will get automatically appended in front of it okay it will suggest like this and we have passed only c here so it is showing us C. So let's do one thing. I will make it more. Uh, what do you call? I will give it as spidey. Batman. And here I will give Superman. Okay. So that will make a, make it more clear. 
so just because it might confuse you using this wherever I've used this I will replace it with pin score A, pin score A so and this subroutine concept is very important to understand because you will have used utility this will make your program look very clean and organized okay so let's say you have few steps in your program which is like get data then uh, process data and then display data so you can just here in your main program it will show only three steps get data process data and display data that's all display output or data whatever so that would be like even a non-technical person is looking at your code they will be able to tell that what is happening in which part of the code okay and they can let's say some new developer join and they can suggest that hey this is the program there is a subroutine there that previous developer has called and you can just analyze and tell us what is going wrong in the process because they won't be knowing the code but they won't they will be knowing where some anything is going wrong okay they will be knowing that okay from table data is coming correct then something is going wrong in the processing subroutine something wrong is getting processed so that's why modularization is very much needed it makes your loop uh, code look more uh, like uh, readable and understandable by anyone okay and last one is this sub so let's replace this you can do control f and replace as well guys but this single character that's why i'm not doing it spidey and betty okay so let's check the syntax error now so your modularized statement is not accessible okay what statement is not accessible c start off don't get confused by the term i'm using here you will see that also so no syntax error So what 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 did I do? What did I do just now? I mentioned something called start of selection. Okay, we will discuss that in our upcoming sessions where we will discuss about events in the program. So just remember that when we use includes and all, so we have to use uh, this. Let's first fix this predicament setting. We have to use something called start of selection event. We have to uh, convert uppercase lowercase uppercase keywords. And now you will see these keywords will become upper case whatever it is that when, when will I will do pretty printer okay so what is this start of selection this is one of the events that we are going to look into classical reports we are going to use events start of selection initialization at selection screen at selection screen output there are like uh, eight nine uh, uh, events are there which we need to understand which are very important for classical reports for perspective and that's a very famous interview question and what are the different types of uh, include so it's all uh, sorry events in a classical report it starts with a load of program so there is external sap web program which is standard program which loads your program and in that program there are set of events which gets called in an order generally the code is executed in a synchronous way in a line by line you see here there is no asynchronous there is all, everything is synchronous first this will get executed then this line will get executed then this line and so on and so forth okay but when you put these events then this uh, what you call it? and i will put this in end of selection or something else or there is another event i will put it in initialization so initialization will trigger first and then start of selection will trigger so it doesn't matter how you have written in the code this line number will not be uh, will not be the criteria okay right now it's based on this line number like sequentially it is executing without that without events but i have added events so now it will you will trigger based on event. We will see that that's a separate topic. So when we use include, it asks for this event to be included. So that's why I've included for the time being. You can ignore it. Okay, and just try to understand the use of include and subroutines and global and local variable. Now that is one thing I have done. What I have done, I have declared a subroutine here, and I have defined it in in this include. So the error is gone. Why the error is gone? This is a separate program in that include is separate SC38 object. So the thing is, I have used that include here. If I will comment this here, 
okay i will comment this you will see that error will be back that add number is add number does not exist and then uncomment it and the error will be gone okay similarly coming to something called data top what is top include being here what we do we use it for we use it for global data declaration so i will say data uh, some global variable syntax generally we use gb gv okay gv uh, test or gv now i will give something num type int4 okay so now this global data gv num report statement is missing okay Need something or I guess I have missed a uh, statement here or what? Statement uh, syntax check and use this activity. It should activate. Okay, generally when you do this kind of data declaration, you try to execute, uh, activate this uh, top include with data declaration it individually, it will show you that uh, error that report statement is missing. This report statement you see here, all report in SE that you start with that statement, it will be missing that, it will not get activated because it treats it as a program and it doesn't find that it gives you error. But when you forcefully activate it with all the objects it will get activated because then it will find the report statement here in this program where it has been used okay so now the benefit of this include you see i will create another program in se 38 okay let's say i will create jet model as one and test one something like that executor program save local object okay and here i can use that include again whatever include i have declared here there i can use it here as, as well so that was jet modularize top and jet modularize sub okay uh, top and then i will control d i will press it will copy that line and then i will do so, so now you see same subroutine i can use it here as well and those variables will be available here as well that subroutine will and here i will if i will call that subroutine using perform statement it will not give me error okay so if you see here where is that perform statement yeah so just call this it will not identify these variables, so I have to declare these variables. Uh, yep. So that has to be declared. That is one thing. Id, let's say, give in type in four. Then I will give this battery type in four, and then sub type. You can give in the same line separate account doesn't matter. You can change the line also. Now you see do the syntax check here. So only one F statement not accessible. So again we have used include, so we have to give something called start of selection here. Start of selection from where your actual programming is starting. So from there you have to give start of selection and then that error will be gone. You see, it got activated. So now you see the reusability concept guys. The whatever the subroutine I have defined here, I can in that include I can reuse that include anywhere in other programs as well. Okay, and whatever the data declared GV num that will be accessible in this program also. Okay, so we will keep both windows open and we will see the impact. Okay, that is the global variable that I have defined in this one. And those variables, whatever I am declaring in this one, can be used anywhere in this program. And one more thing, whatever you declare in this top include or whatever you declare here globally in this program outside any subroutine in the code here i declare some data statement here i declare anything in the data statement outside subroutine everything are, is global variable all are global variable for this program for this program it is global variable and whatever the variable you declare inside if you double click now it will take you to that subroutine okay so here whatever you will declare here that is local to this subroutine i will declare let's say data superman i will say type c so and then I will declare something called static we discussed, right? Let's see if this was static keyword or statics keyword, I think. And 
So I hope I have made it very clear. Now I will do entire subroutine processing here. Just ignore this thing this I have written just for now. I will say you tell you what is that. Now I will do the processing. What I wanted, I wanted the result to be stored in C. And I have told you in the last class that changing and using there is no difference. Whatever I am putting in the using parameter, those values I also I can change here. And whatever I am putting changing here, I may not use it here or I may not change its value here, that's not mandatory, it's just for reading purpose or just displaying purpose, okay, what is the purpose of this variable, why we are passing this particular parameter in the subroutine, okay, this is the signature of the subroutine, okay, here, so you can give n number of variables here, n number of changing, then tables, so all the different, you can do, these are all pass by reference, we are doing pass by reference here, okay, so, c underscore c equal to, so then I have part spy d and batty like that now so it will create by default p underscore spy d p underscore batty p underscore sub or you can leave it any name here okay it should not match with here it should not match with whatever you are doing in the calling here okay so the criteria is main point is the order should match the type of these variables should match that should not be otherwise it will go into error Okay, and always give whatever the type you have given for the variable which you are passing going to pass here. You make sure you give those types here. This is not mandatory, but it is standard coding practice to give type here. You can remove this type here. You can comment this like this. Just comment these things. This part of the code you can comment. Still code will work fine. Okay, it will pick the type from whatever it is going from. But sorry, let let me put it here. Again, I can give you x, y, z, x, y, z, whatever I can give you, x, y, z, 1, x, y, z, 2, same you cannot give, obviously, you can give anything here, but uh, different, different parameters, okay, plus, p, 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 okay, now the value of c will get changed, so without this, without uh, type also you can give, and it will not show you any error, some report still in okay, cancel. Again, you have to activate using all the, just select all, both the subroutine and the program and then activate, it will activate. Different form, number, something, different form of parameter, okay. Number, parameter, number of formal parameter, sorry, yes, this is called formal parameter and actual parameter. So it says, uh, add number routine, add number of formal parameter is 5, number of actual parameter is 3, here I am passing 3 parameters and in the definition I am passing 5 parameter, how come? It is taking us five parameters. How come one, two, three? Oh, sorry, I have not put full stop here. You have put a period. All the statement in a web ends with a period. Now it will activate. Okay. So okay. when you check syntax check individually in a subroutine, it will give you that report statement missing error. So you have to activate it directly. No issue. Okay. It will get activated. So now it will re return this. Now what we will do, we will go in the program, we will copy this, okay, we will copy this and go back in your program and then just, uh, what do you call it? This one, sir. Let's paste it here and I will comment it for the time being. Okay. And what I will do, I will use this right statement here. So now you will see the power of subroutine. I will comment this, I am not adding it here, I am adding it using subroutine. And this same subroutine I will call it again here. Okay. So what do you expect? What should be the result? Sorry. So what should be the result? It will be same as pre previously it was. Well, first it will show you 4 plus 5 is 9, then it will show 10 plus 20 is 30 because we have hard coded the 10 plus 20 here, right? 10 and 20 we have overwritten here. 
So first it is adding from selection screen, it is taking this value whatever we are entering and then it is passing it here and then it is returning this result in the sub as the sum of these two which is happening inside the subroutine. Forget about these two values, we are not printing these things in the output what the value is written. So now I will show you one thing, very interesting thing, what this static is doing. Okay, I will put a breakpoint here. Okay. I will put a breakpoint. The code will execution will stop here for the first time I will execute. Let's say I'll give four and I will give five. And first time first time subroutine gets called, we will see the value of both. Okay. I will debugging is very coming very soon. We will see all the aspect of debugging. Okay, so let's see. You see Superman is blank currently. I will do F5. This statement get executed and X get assigned to Superman here, you see. And then double click on GV test. And then again you see it is blank currently. Because only it has indicated. Now value will get assigned here. Value got assigned. So just remember this GV test is static and this is simple data statement. Okay. Now what is in the value in the C? It got to execute as 9. Okay. It holds the value 9 right now. Just come out of it. Okay, now second time subroutine got called. Okay, so now you see Superman is blank, but GV test is holding the value, and this changing parameter also behaves that because it is coming from your outside uh, reference sub, it is coming from the sub, right? And sub is a variable outside which is declared global variable, it will not lose value until the session ends. Until you come out of the program, it will not lose this value. That's why C is holding the value 9. Otherwise, C should not. That is not a good practice. We have to clear after using the variable. We should clear outside. Okay, we should clear all the variables, whatever we have declared. Okay, in the program, we have declared this. Where is that? So, okay, we'll come to that screen. Uh, I will show you what we have done wrong. Why C is also holding value? It should not hold value. We should clear it after using it. Here only, here only, after using the right statement, you should put the clear statement for the third parameter, what we are passing as changing. Now GV test is still holding the value. Why GV test is holding? Though it will de de declare locally and Superman lost the value. Why in the second call? Why? Because it was data. Statement using declared data. It was locally declared data which assigns memory only for that particular call of the subroutine. And once it comes out of this, it loses that value. It, its memory is gone. Okay, so that value was gone. But for if you declare statics in the next successive routine call, subroutine calls, it will hold that value. Okay, whatever is in that GV text. And here there is a GV text. Again, X is getting a sense, so that is fine. It will hold the value in the next subroutine call also, also if it is getting called. Now we have 30 in it. It got overwritten. And F8. See? It is getting printed. So that is the difference between static and data declaration inside the subroutine and what I was saying that we have to clear that variable I was saying about this one that we have to uh, clear it here after uh, we have done it we should clear it clear sub okay third variable we have to clear because otherwise in the next call also it will hold that value it is globally declared variable so it is accessible inside the subroutine as well and all the variable what we have declared outside the subroutine here, before subroutine or in the top, all will be accessible in anywhere in that uh, subroutine or outside or inside subroutine, anywhere those will be accessible. So GV sum I have declared here, right? GV sum, GV num, right? So GV num I can access anywhere inside the subroutine or outside the subroutine. So let's do one thing. I will assign some value to GV sum, GV num, okay? GV num equal to 30. Okay, and then I will say uh, Okay, now inside subroutine what I will do I will put gv num equal to gv num equal to 20 let's say in 15 Okay so, sorry, not pattern, ultimate, activate. Now, what do you think the output should write the value? Here, I have declared gvnum equal to 30. Inside the subroutine, I have declared gvnum equal to 20. So, how should subroutine behave? Okay, how should it should print the value? I am using sub as well as I am going to print something called and 
just like that i'm just adding gvnum just to print the value okay don't go with the logic of this one. just try to understand what i'm trying to see the global variable concept so you execute for you give five seven something so So you see what is showing here 15 gvnum value is 15 what i have passed here at top i have passed 30 and then i have passed in the subroutine i have again passed 15 so this has got overwritten if i comment this one it will print 30 so is here it's 30 okay so what do you understand by this that global variable if you change at one place its value gets changed at every place okay wherever you once overwritten for the entire duration of the program its value get overwritten and again if you overwrite it will take the new value and it will hold that value forever okay so be very careful while using global variables and always try to clear it at the end of the processing okay otherwise it will hold value till the session ends Okay, sometimes what happens, some people execute like this and they will execute the program and the, some output will come. And again, next time they will try to execute and what happens, let's have a show you. Here, uh, in the subroutine, I declare this one 15. Huh? So what I will do, here I will give gvnum plus 15. Okay. And uh, what I will do here, I won't pass anything. Here I, I will say gvnum is 0. So what do you expect? GVNum is 0 here and that is, uh, sorry, I have to activate the subroutine also. No? So I just activate it and I have first passed GVNum as 0 and then I have passed it as 15 in the subroutine and plus GVNum. So 15 plus 0 will should print 15 only, right? 5, 9, 8 something I will give, I will give execute. So let's see. As soon as I executed the program, it is showing 30. Why? So two times of routine is getting called. Okay, and now if I will execute what it should print, tell me. That this is this, this is the magic you will see. And this is what every programmer does the mistake while coding. They don't clear the global variable and oh it is 30 only. This is weird. Because what happens, I think it is getting refreshed, no problem. So what happens sometimes if you don't clear the global value, it will hold the value first time the subroutine gets called twice here if you see. First here it got called, so 0 got added with the 15, it became 15, it became GVNum became 15. Second time it got called here in this statement here, second time it got called, so it took the value uh, 30. Okay, 15 uh, plus old value 15, 30. And sometimes what happens if you have not cleared that value? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Why it is happening? Because I have declared it explicitly here as 0. Let's not declare it. So default value is 0 and I will show you what will happen. Here, this one I will copy and paste here also. I will show you what will happen. I think I was explicitly redefining it with 0. That's why it, did, it didn't, that error I wanted to show you, it didn't happen. Okay, so you will see the difference what i wanted to show you execute i remove the breakpoint no need for breakpoint necessarily breakpoint is getting triggered i remove this save this and execute okay so you see first it shows 15 then it shows 30 Okay, so first time it was 15, second subroutine call, it talk, took the value 15 plus 15, 30. Now, I will execute it again and you will see. Oh, 15, 30. Generally what happens that it becomes 45 and then it becomes 60. It keeps adding on because that global video has not been clear global memory. Generally it happens with internal tables also you will append 30 lines, 40 lines and then again next time you execute the program it has those 30 lines in it. Already 30 plus 30 it becomes 60 lines and it will show you the output. So clear. Always clear guys at the end of your program. Clear or refresh all your program. Because immediately if you will execute it may cause the issue in the output. And then they say that there is an error in the program. It's not error. Just come out of that session and execute again. It will show you correct result. 
but don't do that always clear your global variables so clearing global variable is very important not only global local as well but global impacts most because it holds for entire memory entire uh, program it holds the memory and everything okay so you have to be very careful about that so that is about using parameter and changing parameter by value and let's see by value how by value works okay currently we are using only uh, by reference so we will see by value how you you pass for value one i am passing as reference and one i will pass as value okay value just put value keyword around it and wrap it in a small bracket so yeah so what it means if you pass a value that actual parameter value will not get value is unknown my value is unknown Check once. I think in the subroutine here also we have to pass value. saying yeah so now you see when you are activating this subroutine after making change in this subroutine underscore sub okay it has been used in modularize one program as well so it is showing that which program you do you actually want to activate it for this change so you have to select i want to activate this program okay just select that and click ok and now it is showing error it is showing some error value is unknown perform add number using Using this, I think here we don't have to pass. That is in the only definition. Okay, I think this is good here, like this one. We are good here, like this one. Yes, we are good here. We don't need that. So just take this, execute, select first one. So this is done. Now this is executed. So what happened now? I have passed your value keyword, right? So what it will do, what this will do, this will pass a copy of the actual variable. So let's say if uh, like p1, p1 p1 uh, is there, so if I will override the value of it here, na, so it will not, uh, what you call it, equal to, let's say, 29 I will give. Okay. So 29. So now let's execute this one. Two, three, execute. So two, three is five, and ten, twenty is thirty. So still you see, a is uh, p underscore a is whatever first parameter is not value is not changed here. It is still showing us two whatever we have passed here. But what I will do here if I will go inside the subroutine and I will make it again as it is as it is it was earlier okay i will just copy it so first of all i will comment this press alt select vertically and then paste it and paste it again and then I will take it off why I am doing this because I want planning to put those back so I don't want to delete and write again ok so let's see how it behaves printer 
and now you will see this 29 that I have mentioned here this line number 18 it should reflect in the output in position of first character it should reflect okay just execute okay while well, you try to execute from uh, include it's not executable but uh, as it is called in the main program it will show you all the list of the main program and executable programs in which it has been called and you just select that and execute okay so now you see 29 29 has appeared okay it has summed up first 2 and 3 as uh, sorry 5 and 3 as 8 and 10 and 20 is 30 and then it is it has overwritten the value and then it is reflect so this is pass by value and pass by reference so this currently we are passing a reference so whatever we are writing in the first parameter values we are changing here so it's changing the value of what is the first parameter here it's value the spid is getting changed it's value is getting changed in the output itself here itself in the main program so it is getting it's that's pass by reference okay and pass by value is when we pass only value statement when we give okay so that value was not getting changed even we were changing it here so it was showing still as 2 in the output okay so that is the difference between possible value and possible reference and then there is something called value and result this is the part where value and result is this one if you remove this this is value and result if you pass a changing parameter as value then it's a value and result that means this value will not get committed changed and it will not reflect in the output uh, like variable whatever battery is spidey whatever we have passed in the third place in the changing variable whatever we have passed it will not reflect there in that one until only this end form gets executed if there is exception has been raised here then it will roll back the value it will not override the global variable okay sorry parameter actual parameter these are formal parameters what we are passing here these are called formal parameters what we are providing during the call of the circuit those are called actual parameters okay so let it be pass by value okay and now this value is not getting impacted it won't impact this one okay so give 5 give anything 8 and execute you will see 13 you will see what are the value passed those are coming here right so this is about subroutines now in the subroutine we can pass uh, tables as well okay but this that statement is obsolete so i'm not going to dig into that one so and that is uh, here you have to put a using and tables though that comes first actually here you have to pass tables and as underscore whatever you have to pass here and the subroutine call also you have to pass that table parent and that internal table you can use it for processing okay so let's not go into that because that is obsolete practice but you should be knowing that and just if you want to practice practice on yourself because i'm not going to waste time on it okay so uh, in the generally what happens that when we are passing with header line table and, and then uh, what you call it it gets passed as by reference okay with header line when you pass and when you pass only the body then if you pass like uh, using and changing you can pass the table in the using and changing parameter also okay pass value it, it it's same as we saw for variables using and changing pass by reference pass by value pass by value and result okay so it, it behaves the same you can pass directly the internal table instead of the variable you can give the, uh, that name of that internal table that's all that that's all and then you can use it here and the behavior is same pass by reference pass by value everything is exactly same okay so just uh, dig on that part i'm not going to so next to class we'll discuss about function module function groups okay and how to defining function other modulation technique called function module. so i hope you are clear on this include part and uh, the subroutine part two modulation technique we have discussed so we can do one more thing we can do uh, like let's say create include program it's saying anyway include here so what i will do i will create one more include here jet modularize and underscore cell generally we these three are you see by default ratio include program just give save save from here also you can create will be inserted in this program you see one include statement will get inserted in the point give you the warning and once you activate this let's activate this it will get inserted in the gmodularization just select both and activate okay and now you will see one include statement will be there include top where is that cell 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 ah here 
Let's put it in 30 days. It should be at top or we'll give it a Okay. So what is this uh, which I have declared here right now is something called cell. Cell underscore cell. This is for selection screen. Whatever I have passed here, parameter that I am giving for selection screen, I can go and I can define it in this one. In this subroutine here. Okay, and still it will be the same. Now the benefit of this is one one is that your code is looking clean. That first subroutine is uh, you are showing as selection screen parameter. So anybody wants to make changes in the selection screen, they will not go to the code or anything. They will directly go to the cell subroutine, and then underscore cell include. Sorry, they will go in cell, and then they will see it here. Okay, it's fine now. Just go to the program and then execute. You see, it's there. Nothing has changed here. Okay. Nothing has changed. Why is Spidey and Batty is coming? Though I have defined the text element because I changed the parameter names, right? Parameter names for p underscore and p underscore b. So now it it will show you that uh, okay, these are obsolete parameters. Do you want to delete it or something like that? Suggestion. Let's go there and selection text. You see, I think what is, these are not used actually. When you try to activate now. I will say num1 here and I will say num2 here and you will try to activate it it will show you delete extraneous selection text from the pool, text pool do you want to delete those which are not be going, being used currently in your program say yes generally you say uh, no because we don't want to ch make changes while we historically we want to keep it when in the real time production program we are making change because we are not supposed to delete anything from our program even if you are coding some logic let's say some code some bug came up or some requirement change came up in your program and you want to change that so you don't delete the logic we don't uh, remove the code what we do we just comment it okay comment like this i don't want this right in statement no? so just comment it and write a comment here begin of change and date and transport request every tag and end of tag and why it was there will be a ticket associated with it or some number will be associated with it they, that will be given to you by your team lead or someone so you have to assign those things so that you can track it in future so SAP provides something called version management also that also we will see I will just give you a click here go to version and go to version management it will show you list of version let's say currently there is only one version is there local version generally it will show you transport request now previously we were creating using transport request right that system is not working i'll show you otherwise when it will open so we will let transport request now if that transport request is released to quality it will come below this you see there are no words in the version database so it will come in the version database then currently it is in development database so once you it's released it goes to version database and one copy will go to quality and here it will be blank nothing will be there okay and then, then next when you start editing it, it will show you that transfer so you can compare those versions checkbox this checkbox that one and then do comparison compare it will show you what exactly what all line has been changed in both the versions so that version history is already there even if you remove code it's not going anywhere it, it is there in the previous version you can retrieve it always you can retrieve using retrieve you can retrieve the old version also okay and you can override the existing version with the old version but the thing is, it's good practice to keep it in the code itself. Do not delete any code from the production, like customer production programs that move for custom programs. Okay, always comment it and put a tag why it has been commented, under which ticket and under which tier it has been commented. So that is very easy to, uh, without doing version comparison, just looking like at program itself. I will say, okay, this was the reason this has been commented out. For now, user blah blah user tool. Okay, I don't need this in the output, so it has been removed from the output. Okay, so just comment that. Do not do. So we are done with the uh, includes and we are done with generally these are three includes that we create roughly very roughly you can have any naming convention for that starting with that and anything you can follow and you can re re reuse these things in other program also same same input but that is not uh, advisable because generally this subroutine and whatever we keep changing for a specific program so let's say add number I have made it here pass by value and all. And in other program, they are expecting it as pass by reference, this same subroutine. They are calling that add number, I showed you, I called that here. Here they are expecting uh, the value should not, uh, value should get updated, pass by reference they want, okay. So inside that, they want to update the value of spidey inside the subroutine itself. So it should be passed by reference, because inside subroutine value is changing, it should imp impact this variable. Okay, so it should be passed by reference. But what we have done here, for our purpose in this program, for modularized, program we have changed it to pass by value 
okay so it will not solve their purpose so never mix up the inputs generally we avoid reusing inputs that's the whole purpose of it but it may mostly we use it to clubbing the similar codes at one place selection script code at one place data declaration at one place subroutine definition at one place like that and now the call of subroutine will structure our program okay so that's all for today's session we will see you in the next session and thank you for all your love and subscription and then all the sharing please do share with anyone who is looking for free sap web le learning and please leave your comments and feedback in the mail and uh, uh, and in the comments below in the youtube okay and thank you so much have a great day